Hey everybody, welcome to Jay Stern Designs. Today is the first day of my new format where I'm not gonna call Tuesday Quick Tip Tuesday anymore. I'm gonna call it JSD TV. And that way I can feel free to make a little bit of a longer video without feeling like I'm sort of making a long quick tip that's not a quick tip. So today I'm gonna talk about fleece hats and um, Thursday, I'm going to give you a quick tip that will be a five minute or less, you know, get the information and get out kind of format. So that's the new, my new thing I'm doing. Um, I'm excited today because I worked on the weekend making more Christmas gifts and I'm making fleece hats and I'm going to make fleece hats for my nephews and for um, my brother and my brother-in-law and for my girls and I just I wanted to make a hat that I liked and was comfortable and warm and so basically the hat that I have on my head is my inspiration my daughter gave me this hat for Christmas four years ago and number one you can tell I love it because I haven't lost it yet the fact that I've had the same hat for four years is really almost a miracle um, but you know, it's kind of cute. It's got a lot going on. It has not only these two ding-dongs, but it has the ding-dong back here. Um, and it's a very warm. I like the shape of it because you can see on the sides, it's got a piece that comes down and covers your ear. It also goes down lower in the back, which allows it to be a very warm, comfortable hat. So I wanted to design my own pattern, which I could then gift to you for the holidays. And I basically used my hat and I basically draped the pieces on the hat. And the way I did that was I used my ham. I sort of pretended this ham was my head and I put some more batting in there and I used it to make my first draped pattern. So on Thursday, that's gonna be the quick tip. I'm gonna show you how to use your ham to drape the shape of a hat or the crown portion, you know, the top curve portion of your head. All right, so basically after I cleaned up that whole muslin, um, this is what I ended up with. And I trued it up so if I folded it in half, these curves matched. So basically I folded it in half trued that up so those would sew together nicely and I did the same on the other side um, and I ended up with this one piece um, pattern and in the center front it was cut on the fold and in the center back there was a seam so what I did was I made a paper version okay so here's my paper version that was the top part of the hat and then I used the bottom part that I traced to make the band around the bottom of the hat let me show you what happened when I sewed the top together. You can see that because of the shape of the crown, you get these little pokies at the end of the seams. You can see that. And that's not bad or wrong. I just don't particularly care for it. So plus you have this weird thing in the back where you have the two pokies plus you have the back center seam. And I decided that that wasn't my dream design. So basically what I did was I took the center one and I traced it. And then what I did was I measured the entire length of this, you know, the, the band part of the hat and I doubled it. And basically this measures 22 inches. I made the single wedge shape equal to a quarter of the distance minus the seam allowances. This is a six inch wide across here, but it's really five and a half with two quarter inch seams. So if you do five and a half times four, you get 22 inches. And when I measured the base minus the back seam allowance, that's what I got, 22 inches. So that's how I came up with the second design. I made the crown piece um, wide enough so I could sew together four sections and equal the band. So the new hat, which I will model for you, is um, that version and I really, really like it. And actually I was able to make it reversible. So see, I've got this blue, but the red underneath is completely 
you know, I could turn it and wear it the other way as well. And then I braided um, three strips of fleece to make these sort of, I don't know what you would call them, little um, tails at the base of the ear flap. Now, the cool thing about this hat is you could make it with or without these tails for the man in your life. Um, my husband tried it on and I said, you know, I could make the ear piece a little bit shallower so it's not quite as obvious. And he's like, no, I love it. It'll keep my ears warm in the winter, you know, outside in the wind. So he's getting one with no dingles. Um, you know, probably my brother-in-law as well. My brother, on the other hand, I know he'll wear it with these. So it's sort of this really cool unisex hat um, with or without these dingles. And I'm really happy with the way that it fits with this wedge piece. So the pattern that you can download will be this. Now, the cool thing is if you decide that you want to do this one piece style, because you can, basically what you would just do is trace four of these and take them together, minusing the um, quarter inch seam allowances on the edges, and you can do it in one piece and just have the center back seam with the little dart seams at the top. Now what I want to do is I want to show you the um, pieces and how you cut them out and then how you put them together because this is a really quick project so I can literally sew it together in five minutes. <coughs> um, <coughs> well, okay. So I'm just going to take a few minutes and show you the easiest way to sew it together so if you're all excited to make this hat, um, you can do that. And what I'm going to do is, on the downloadable pattern, it will have three sizes. This will be the large size. I have a pretty big head. And then what I'll do is I'll make a medium and a small. And the small size is probably a great size for kids. But again, you can just measure around your head and make the band fit, and then just tailor these to fit as well. So it'll be available in three sizes. And let me show you how to put it together. All right, so I've already cut out my pieces, and this hat that I have is completely reversible with one color. Um, so see, now I've got red on. And you could do it any way you want. You could have it be, um, you know, two-tone, like so you could use blue or red or whatever for the band and have the crown portion be a different color, or you could do it all the same color or whatever. Um, for my sewing, I made this new version, um, brown and red, and I don't have as much red fleece as I have brown, so I decided I would cut out the entire brown outside of the hat, so you need four of these sections. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the outside of the hat. And then for the inside, or the reverse side, I cut a red band but then I also cut four more brown pieces because the only thing you can see when you're wearing it is the inside of the earpiece, you know, down here. So if you have scraps of a color that you'd like to show um, in your reverse side, but you don't care if it's completely reversible or maybe one side will be two-tone, so the inside will be red and brown, you, know, you can have that flexibility. Let me show you how to sew it together. The easiest way to sew the crown portion together is to sew two halves together and then sew um, the halves together to make a hole. And I've had the opportunity to try this Baby Lock Imagine Serger, and I cannot believe what luxurious serging it is. Um, it's very, very nice. It has a little air threading on it. I mean, I really love it. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to make this hat using this serger. Um, I put my pieces together lining up, you know, right sides together. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew from the base to the tip of the hat. You know, on a kid's hat, what would be really cute to use, you know, two different color fleeces for these sections and then make like a, you know, every other color. Um, or you could use four different colors. You can really make a lot of cute things with this hat. All right, so let me just search this. Okay, all right, so you can see I've sewn just one side. Okay, so I've sewn from here to here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this one.
The important thing here is you want to make sure you line up your seams. And because fleece can get a little bit bulky, I'm going to push one seam allowance to the left and one to the right. So I'm sort of making them go in opposite directions. And I'm just going to line this up so that the seam is aligned with each other. So it'll make a nice little plus sign after it's sewn. And I'm just going to use two pins to hold it. I'm not a fan of using a lot of pins when I'm using the serger because if you miss one and you cut through it with the blade, you can ruin your blade. So I try to keep pinning to a minimum here and I try to really remember to take them out before I get to them. All right, so I've got that pinned and I'm just gonna stick it in there. And because this fleece is a little bit bulky, I'm just gonna use my finger, lift the presser foot up, stick both pieces of fleece in there so they're flush against the needles. And that way the feed teeth will really be able to grab that fleece and evenly pull it. So now I'm just going to serge that. And I'm just barely trimming off as I, you know, skim along the edge of the side here. All right, let's look and see what I have now. All right, see, I have a lovely top to the hat. The next step is I'm going to sew the center back seam on the band portion. And I'm just gonna make sure right sides are together. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot and I'm going to stitch that back seam. I think what I'll do now um, is let me just repeat that. I've got my two pieces for my outer hat. Let me just piece together the crown portion of the reverse side and then I'll show you how to put the rest of it together. All right, so now I have my two sections, um, my crown and my band for one side, and then the crown and the band for the reverse. Okay, so I've got those two sets. Um, one of the cool things about working with fleeces, it's very, very forgiving. Um, I really tried to keep all of my sections feeding in evenly, but you can see in this case, see how this one is a little bit uneven here? All I'm gonna do is do this. I'm just gonna skim it off and I'm just gonna even it right back to the original so it looks totally fine and happy. Um, you know, this one is peeking out a little bit so I'm just gonna ever so slightly just trim that so it completely matches. So if it works out that your, your bottom edge is slightly off, just trim it and make it even, okay? Because really, you're not gonna notice that in this kind of project. All right, so once you have your edges even, just find the center of one of these quadrants, and I just like to fold it in half, and then just line up the seams like this and just put a pin. So that's now gonna become my center back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my band where the seam is, and I'm just gonna put it right sides together with the seam matching up in the center of that quadrant. And the cool thing is now that I've got that lined up, I basically can just pin it around the whole edge of the hat because I know I cut them out accurately and the pattern pieces match. So I know all I have to do is pin around and it will fit perfectly. All right, so see I've got that pinned together Okay, so now I'm gonna just get my second set ready to go back to the serger and I'm just gonna sew those together. Whew. All right. All right, so I'm taking the hat off because it's very, very warm and I'm starting to get overheated. Um, all right, so I've got both of my hats pinned together. So basically I'm just gonna sew around on the serger now to connect those. I have my right sides together and because I have so many pins going on here, the important thing is to remember to take the pins out before I get to them. All right, so I'm gonna take the first pin out because it's pretty close, and I'm just gonna serge around. Okay, so here's one that I sewed, and you can see that this is how it looks. So that would be my center back, and this would be my center front. 
I think the red and the brown look kind of cool together. Um, I'm going to sew the second one and then we're going to see how we put them together and finish it. All right, so here's my two hat sections and I'm looking at them and I just realized that I forgot to leave an opening to turn the hat to the right side after it's completely sewn together. I think the easiest place to leave an opening is um, along this bottom edge on the front of the reverse piece because my first try, I left it in between on this curved piece right here. You can sort of see I hand sewed it together here. And you can see it's barely noticeable, but it's a little bit wavy. So I think a better place to leave an opening would be somewhere along this straight edge. And it doesn't need to be a big hole. Um, so I will make a note of that on the actual pattern piece to leave it open on the lining side or the reverse side because you know, I knew I had to leave a hole and I was so excited to show you how to make this hat that I completely forgot to do it in the end. So I'm just gonna make about a two inch hole and that will be plenty big. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Okay, so now you can see the little hole. All right, so now um, the two hat pieces are sewn together. Now I wanna show you how to make these braided tails for to attach to your hat. Basically what I did was I cut a wide brown piece and two narrower red pieces. So the one that just has one out of the three is a little bit wider than the other one. And what that does is it kind of gives it an interesting texture and it doesn't look like a uniform braid. I think it's a little bit more interesting. So you can play with that, you know, the width, the thicknesses of your strips. And so basically I, you know, I braided down the whole length and then I tied a knot. Okay, so I have a knot on my two ends for now. And then the other thing we wanna do is we wanna cut it in half. Now, before we cut it in half, we have to do something to it so it doesn't ravel, unravel. So I'm gonna find my center, which is right here. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch across on the sewing machine on either side of my pin, and then I'm gonna cut it at the pin so I have two pieces for both sides of my hat, you know, for my left and right side. All right, so I'm just gonna just, I'm, I'm really not gonna be fancy. I'm not even gonna zigzag. I'm just gonna straight stitch across just to hold those, um, the braid together. Now, it's important when you're sewing something thick like this that you don't try to force it through because if you try to push it too fast, what will happen is you'll snap your needle. So just be careful about that. Just let it stitch, you know, till it makes it across. All right, so now that I've sewn it, I can just cut it. So I'm just going to cut in the middle of my stitching. Okay, so I, now I have two pieces that I can use. And basically, these have to get attached to the hat um, before we sew them together. And what you wanna do is you want these to obviously come out on the right side. See my ear piece, my little, where the ear piece hangs down? I'm just going to stick it like this. So I'm gonna center it right there. So you want the tail to be right down there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna baste it on on the sewing machine, just to hold it in place. I'm stitching it right near the bottom, okay? So I'm right near. Let me just show you how that looks. All right, so see, it's just right, it's just centered right there. And then I'm gonna sew the other one on the other side. So I'm gonna take my other piece and I'm just gonna line it right up and stitch it right like that. All right, so the next step is to pin the two, the reverse side and the outside hats together. So I'm gonna pile all of my um, tail in and I'm gonna turn it inside out like this so it makes like a bag. And that'll make it easy to manage the little dangly hanging things that hang down. And then I'm gonna put the second hat in right sides together and I'm gonna line it up so that the center back seams line up. 
first. Okay, I'm just gonna put a pin there. Okay, so my center back is lining up. And then I'm just gonna um, pin to the ear, the base of the ear flap, like that. All right, and then I'm gonna go to the other side, and I'm gonna pin the other base of the ear flap as well, because before I sew this on the serger, I'm just gonna stitch across the base of this braided um, tail with the sewing machine. I'm not gonna try to go across it with my serger because I think it's too heavy. So basically what I wanna do is I wanna just do this little part first. So see how I've got that pinned together? So basically I'm just gonna sew from here to here on the sewing machine. I'm gonna do both sides. And that's gonna secure my, um, my little dangles or tails or whatever we wanna call them. All right, so now that I have my tails secured of my braids, like the braids are secured, because I sewed across, I'm gonna surge from ear to ear in the back, in the front, and I'm also gonna do it in the back. And the cool thing is I could use, you know, this little braid to help me get it in there on the serger. So I'm gonna start on one side. I'm just gonna surge it together. Remember, I don't have to leave a hole because I'm leaving a hole in the other seam between the crown and the band, so. Okay, so I, sur I surged from edge to edge, and now I'm gonna do the same thing in the front. See, I'm actually using the little bit of the braid as a lead-in um, to start surging. All right, now it's time for the big reveal. I'm just gonna trim the extra parts of the braid off that I really don't need there on both sides. And then I'm gonna find the little hole that I made and I'm gonna pull it through. This project is almost instant gratification. Literally, I could make one of these probably, you know, after I make the braid, probably 20 minutes, half an hour. Okay, look at how cool this is. See? And here we have our super comfy, cozy fleece hat. All right, so that's how you put together this cool J Stern Designs hat. You can get the free pattern um, if you go to my blog at jsterndesigns.com. I'll put a link in the blog post that goes along with this video. The fleece that I used for this project, I got at Joanne Fabrics. And I was really excited because some of their fleece isn't my favorite quality, but they have a new line called Lux Fleece. It's beautiful. Um, so definitely check that out if you live near a Joanne Fabrics because it's really easy to work with and it's super soft. I was able to use two layers um, in this hat and it's not too heavy. So it's a really great fleece. They have a lot of different colors um, at Joanne Fabrics. Have a great day and I'll see you for Quick Tip Thursday.